good morning, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today is actually Monday, and I'm hoping that I can get this video up for you today. Um, I've kind of been running a day behind, but nonetheless, we are making a video. So you've all heard me speak about Gay from Apron Strings, and I was watching her Saturday video, and she made something called a special occasion casserole. So today's video is going to be a video response to her special occasion casserole because I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. So I have, sorry about the noise here, I have in the pan here a stick of butter and I'm trying to let that melt here. And what I'm going to add to that, and let me show you what I've done here, is two large Vidalia onions that I have sliced and then I'm going to break them into like the onion ring type sections and we're going to put those in the pan and start letting them soften so we're not going to caramelize them we're simply going to uh, soften them so let me get these in the pan and then I'll tell you what my ideas are and why I wanted to do a video response to this gig. So, as you all know, today is March 8th, so it's only 13 days till the first day of spring. Aren't y'all excited? I know I'm excited, very excited. You know, this has seemed like a long winter, and we've had more snow here in Ohio than, than we do some years. Certainly not the most snow I've ever seen, but um, yeah, quite a bit. So this week they're saying that we are going to have 60 degree weather Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I really hope that's the case. But a lot of times we will have snow even up into April. So <laughs> winter isn't quite over yet, but just knowing that the calendar spring is coming it is definitely encouraging. All right, so I have all of those in there. Let me just kind of smoosh them down and let those start to cook. Let me tell you what my thoughts are. So this dish is a cornbread onion casserole. Now that you may be like, ooh, that does not sound good. I know this is going to be good. So I was trying to think up a way to use this as a side dish for Easter because do you realize four weeks from yesterday is Easter? So I actually happen to have two turkeys in the freezer and I need the freezer space because we're going to be coming into growing season here and I'll want other things in the freezer besides turkey. So I'm gonna cook a, cook a turkey for Easter, which is not my traditional cook, it's usually ham. However, I started thinking about my grandmother's homemade dressing. So it's a little different, it's a southern cornbread dressing, and I decided to change up the spices in this recipe from what Gay used to make it a little bit more like my grandma's southern cornbread. And I'm trying it ahead of time because in full disclosure, I've not made this before. I wanna make sure it's very tasty, see what adjustments I might need to make to it. Gay actually used dill as her spice in it. I am going to use crushed red pepper and lots and lots of sage and black pepper and a little bit of salt. So to my onions here, and again, we don't want those browned, we're just softening it. I am going to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt just to help those onions sweat out a little bit. And now I'm going to uh, pause you for just a minute. I'm gonna turn the camera around or create some more room here somehow. You know, this whole kitchen and I'm cooking in like a Kleenex size area. I do have my oven preheating to 325 degrees. I have a nine and a half inch a temptation square pan from QVC that I have sprayed with cooking spray and 
let me get organized here and I'll bring you right back. We'll start to make the cornbread portion of this dish. Okay, I think I'm a little better organized now. So for those of you who are new to my channel or who have not watched a video where I've mentioned apron strings, Gay is a phenomenal, phenomenal cook. And not only does she do regular cooking videos like family-sized meals, she also does once a week cooking for one or two, which I just love that aspect of her channel because many of us may only be cooking for one or two. I'm cooking for one. Sometimes I eat like I'm cooking for two. <laughs> so anyway, here we go with the cornbread mix. So what I've done is I've taken a package of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix, eight and a half ounces, and to that I'm going to add half a cup of buttermilk, and I've already put one egg in it. So let's go ahead and stir that in. So we're just making, you know, a cornbread dough, so to speak, or batter. So in our family, our tradition has always been, you must make your dressing. It's not stuffing, it's dressing, just like grandma made. So grandma likes spicy food. So I am going to put uh, about an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe quarter teaspoon of the crushed red pepper. And you could certainly omit that if you don't like it. I'm going to do a few grinds of regular black pepper. And again, I'm going to say maybe quarter teaspoon. I am going to add four drops. Now this I'm going to follow Gay's advice of my favorite hot sauce. And she was using a red hot sauce. I'm going to use Arizona Gunslinger Green Jalapeno smoking Hot Pepper Sauce. Um, and actually, ooh, those don't really come out in drops. Okay, that's probably the equivalent of four drops. I do not find this to be as screaming hot as the label advertises, but again, you could do it to taste, and if you're not a big fan of hot, spicy food, you could certainly lighten it up or omit it all together. Okay, now comes the magic ingredient. So, when my grandma made cornbread dressing, she would put a pan of cornbread, so a, a skillet of cornbread, because she did make it in a cast iron skillet. And then she would have bread cubes or uh, stale bread. In modern times, we've used the seasoned bread cubes from Pe Pepperidge Farm. So they come in like a little bag or a bigger bag. I would use two of the small boxes or one of the larger bags. And to that, we would add one of the small spice cans, all of it, of sage. So it can impart a bitter taste if you have way, 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 way too much. So I'm not going to go that extreme with it, but I want this to put me in the mind of grandma's stuffing. So I'm going to put hmm, about two teaspoons of the sage. Ah, uh, yes, smells like grandma stuffing. And I'm just gonna sit that aside. Now our onions have softened really well. And what kind of gave me the idea to go the stuffing route? Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot to put our cream corn. <laughs> Good gravy. Um, you do wanna put one can and this is a 14.75 ounce can of creamed corn, not regular corn, into your Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. Yeah. Now that looks like a nice consistency cornbread. Oh, smells delicious. All right, where was I? Oh, what put me in the mind? Um, my son... I've shared before as an excellent chef. And this year he made and smoked a lot of different kinds of cheeses. 
So no, this isn't green moldy cheese. This is actually sage cheese that he has smoked. So I had a little of it left and I thought, you know, instead of using cheddar cheese, which is what the recipe called for, I am going to use the sage cheddar cheese that has been smoked. So to our onions, we are going to add, just verifying, a cup of sour cream. And I did try to pre-measure everything, so that's why you're not seeing me measure. It's nice and clean. that in turn my heat down just a little bit so this is going to turn into a to a creamy onion sauce that is going to go on top of our cornbread and then all of it get baked together so as you see we have now a much creamier mixture and then to that now technically you should have shredded the cheese because it was a tiny little chunk of cheese I decided I was just going to slice it thinly and it will melt in, with the heat right into this. So I'm going to let this hang out for a little bit until my cheese melts and then I will bring you back and we will layer everything together and give it a bake and see how my take on Apron Strings Special Occasion Casserole tastes. So stay tuned. All right, well, we have our corn muffin, cornbread mix in the bottom of our nine inch pan. And I want to show you my onion mixture and um, encourage you that if yours is not green, which I'm sure you can see it's got a green cast to it, this is from the sage that was in the cheese, as well as I did add about a teaspoon of sage maybe half teaspoon of black pepper because we don't want all the flavor to just be in the cornbread portion. So what we're gonna do here is I am going to spoon this kind of evenly over the top of the cornbread. I know I'm off screen here. Give me just a second and I'll show you what we're looking like here. Okay. Okay, now you can see. So I'm just gonna kind of distribute those onions a little more evenly throughout so that every bite that we get will have both cornbread and onion. And then as the finishing touch, before we put it in a 325 degree oven for 30 minutes, we are gonna top it with just some cheddar cheese. So it's gonna have a nice golden, layer of cheese on the top. So even though this is a onion side dish, I think it's going to have a lot of flavor and I think it's going to go extremely well with turkey. And I'm curious, what are you all going to uh, make for Easter? My favorite is always the side dishes. I'm not the good meat eater that I really should be, but I like trying new side dishes, so this is gonna be something new this year. Alrighty, so I'm gonna put this into the oven. I will bring you back after it's nice and golden brown and bubbly and has had 30 minutes in the oven, so stay tuned. Well, our cooking time has elapsed. It actually took me about 35 minutes in my oven, but look how gorgeous is this cornbread with onions. So I'm actually going to dish up a little bite here, give it a taste and let you know what I think here. So, oh, the texture is a lot like a, like a stuffing would be, you know, um, even though it has a bread consistency, it is moist as you can see, and it's still smoking hot, smoking hot. So let's see if I can do this without burning my mouth. Get a little bit of the onion with it. And those came out nice and tender. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. The sage taste really comes through. And it definitely puts me in the mind of my grandma's homemade dressing. So let me know, what are you having for Easter this year? Do you plan to do a ham, a turkey, or do you have another tradition that you like to do for your family? And also, what do you think of the side dish? I know you're going to give it a try. I'm telling you, it's really, really, really tasty. Even if you're not like a raw onion fan, this is rich and delicious, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So I do want to remind all of you, um, let's not forget about Heather over at the Needy Homesteader. Please keep her in your prayers. If you um, find that you're able to donate, I have been made aware that there has been some fake GoFundMe um, postings that have gone up where someone has taken the photographs from her accident and of her family. And so just make sure if you contribute that you do so from the Needy Homesteaders Facebook page and that when you go out to contribute that the website says GoFundMe. I can't remember what the fake one is. It's Plum something. So if Plum comes up, you're not in the right place. And of course, as always, keep her her family, Matt's family, in your prayers. So I, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to leave me a comment about what you're having for Easter. Woo, about well set for. And I will see you a little bit later this week. I do need to do a video on my new fabrics. So um, kind, kind of still moving slow after my surgery, but I, I will say I'm feeling so much better. So thank you again for all your well wishes and your prayers. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I'll see y'all later this week. Take care.